So this video is coming from uh, by request uh, from a uh, YouTuber with the handle of um, American Muslim Girl, uh, which apparently is, is a bit outdated now. Uh, she told me her uh, born name was Cherie. So hi, Cherie. Um, this video is for you. Um, as usual, it, it comes with uh, the usual, you know, Randy Helzerman disclaimers in terms of um, uh, these sorts of discussions. Um, you know, you asked me to uh, give a critique of your argument for the existence of God or why you believe in the existence of God right now. See if I can poke holes in it, stuff like this. Um, you know, I, I really have absolutely no um, desire to to uh, persuade anybody not to believe in God. Um, you know, the, you know that's just not my thing, right? Um, and I hope if you do believe in God... Um, Anybody who's listening to this um, and listen to what I'm about to say, that, that it doesn't cause you to stop believing in God. Um, so, um, having said that, um, you know, you did request that I, like, uh, poke holes in your argument here. So, um, let me first briefly rehearse your argument um, to see if I have understood it correctly. And, and if I haven't understood it correctly, uh, please... Uh, post another video or something like that to to, uh, to uh, correct me on this. Um, so apparently, it, it kind of goes like this. So um, everything comes from something, right? So, so basically, uh, either the universe is eternal or something else that is eternal has to have caused the universe to come into being. And you don't think the universe could be that eternal thing. Because it's always changing. Um, and uh, so it, there has to be some eternal thing which is, um, which is um, you know, there that, that doesn't change in order to cause this universe that we see that is full of change. Um, I think that's the general gist of it. Again, please uh, um, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. Um, now... Let me tell you why why this isn't um, persuasive to me. Um, and again, like you said, I, I may be right, I may be wrong, but, but here's here's why it's not persuasive to me. Let, let's do a, a kind of a thought experiment here. Um, you know, is the universe really changing uh, all the time? You know, we our perspective is so limited, right? I mean, we are here in in time and space, and we're talking about something which is outside of time and space. Um, let's do a thought experiment. Okay, so this is kind of like Plato's allegory of the cave, but it's it's uh, Randy Helzerman's allegory of the movie theater, right? Suppose somebody was, they'd lived their entire life strapped into a, a movie theater chair, right? And they'd been seeing the same movie their entire life, and the movie's just going on and on and on. They're looking at the screen. So they may actually think that that movie is actually changing, right? They're, they're, they're watching the change right there on the screen, um, and they may actually start believing in cause and effect, right? Somebody, um, you know, pulls a trigger on the, on, on the screen and then one of the other characters falls dead and they might reach the conclusion, well, I mean, the, the gun has caused the death of this person, right? They, they're seeing all this change and um, they're saying, well, yeah, there's obviously cause and effect. There's obviously lots of change and everything, right? But, but is like, really, what's, is, is there really cause and effect there? Is there really change? Is, in fact, is it really even going on what's there? Or is it just special effects, right? So suppose, you know, one day the person is maybe 27 years old or something, right? And, and, and um, the, the movie attendants finally come in, unstrap the guy from the chair and say, listen, let me show you what you've been watching your whole life, right? And he, he brings him up to the, to the projector room and there's this huge canister of film, right? And he's saying, you've been seeing all this change, but this, it's not really change. This, this film is is just what it is. What, what we've been doing is we've shown you frame after frame after frame. Uh, but the, the movies, it looks like it's changing, but it's not really changing. Um, and you can imagine God creating the universe like that, right? What if God doesn't really use cause and effect uh, in his design of the universe, right? What if we're just merely presented with frame after frame after frame of what's going on, you know, like right here. I'm this, this is one one of the frames. I'm I'm happen to be here looking at this, uh, you know, camera and making this this YouTube video. But what I'm doing in this frame doesn't really cause the next frame. It's just 
that's how the story is written. That's just, you know, the way the way God did it, right? So, I mean, it, it looks like the universe is changing, but it, it might just be our perspective on, on the universe that's changing, right? So, or like my, my, my bookshelf behind me here. I mean, you can imagine, like, just being able to see one of the books at a time, and as you're, you're going past it, you might see the book that you're looking at is changing, but the, the whole bookshelf itself really isn't changing. You know, it's just your perspective on it that's changing, or it's just the illusion of change, right? So basically what I'm trying to say is, you know, we, we have, our perspectives are so limited. We're inside of this time and space, right? Everything that we see is made of something. Everything that we see is, is happening in time and space. And yet we're trying to go from that, from our experience of time and space and the intuitions that we have about what's happening in time and space and try to project that into something which is not in time and space. Uh, something which is we're, we're looking at something that's changing all the time and, and trying to figure out about something that doesn't change at all or we're looking at something that happens in time and space and and we're trying to figure out about something which doesn't happen in time and space um, I think most of the major religious traditions really agree that this is a problem um, implicitly I mean they 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 like to offer proofs of God that are that are there but I mean, implicitly, they admit this is a problem because, you know, why else would there be prophets, right? If we could just figure this out just by sitting and thinking about it, um, we wouldn't need prophets. I mean, though, the whole point of prophets is to give us the stuff that we couldn't really think about, you know. You know so the prophets would have to come and tell us what is beyond time and space. Otherwise, we really wouldn't have any way of, of, of knowing this, right? So... Um, whether there is cause and effect, whether there is something that needs to, to cause something else, um, you know, maybe, maybe not, right? I can imagine circumstances which, um, you know, the, like, for example, the, the whole universe is just this, this movie that's playing. And it's not really cause and effect. I mean, we're just seeing one snapshot of it at a time, snapshot after snapshot. I couldn't tell the difference between that and the universe, that which actually is cause, governed by cause and effect, right? So I'm really, I'm really skeptical. I mean, it's, it's really, um, it, 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 you know, any observation that we make in using time and space, any intuitions that we have about time and space, trying to go from that to something which is, has absolutely no um, relevance to um, whatever experience that we've had, is, is, it's really hard for me to, to do that. It's really hard for me to, to take any conclusions I draw from that with any degree of certainty at all. And then like, I, like I said again, okay? Um, that's why it's not persuasive to me. It, it may be persuasive to somebody else or it may, may somebody else may feel it. And, and if, if you do believe in God, I certainly hope that that uh, didn't uh, dissuade you from believing in God whatsoever. Okay, let's see what else is, is on the plate here. Um, yeah, and so... so Downstream from that, you have a whole bunch of conclusions about what exactly would God be like, right? Um, and, and again, it's, it's kind of hard for me to, um, to see. I mean, if we're talking about something like God, which isn't in time and space, and something like God, which is not something that we've seen, reasoning from, from what, what God has created to, to any attribute of God really seems like a hard... That's a hard, hard jump for me to jump, right? I mean, if we look at, like, say, uh, uh, one of the metaphors that, that, that has been used when I've been talking to, uh, to Muslims and Christians about this is that, like, you know, you see a house, you obviously know there was a builder of that house that built that house, right? And then you can go on and say certain things about this house. So, yeah, I mean, if somebody looked at my house, um, you know, they say, yeah, it's probably built by somebody and... Uh, and, um, you know, whoever that person was, we can make some certain assumptions about them. They're not 20 feet tall, for example, because this, the ceilings are only 8 feet tall. Uh, the doors, you know, they're, they're not 50 feet wide because the doors are, are only 3.5 feet wide. Things like that, right? Uh, but that's only because that human being is living in that house, right? God doesn't live in the universe like, like, um, like we live in our houses, right? God is completely a different thing from the universe um, otherwise God couldn't have been the creator of the universe right so um, if we're talking about 
you know, suppose like I created a house for for something or some sort of dwelling for something which which absolutely I wasn't going to live in was a different kind of creature altogether, maybe a sea creature or something like this, right? Looking at at, at whatever I designed and built for that particular form of life, um, you wouldn't be able to to reason very much about what 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 I what kind of, what I, my form of life is, right? And so. It seems, you know, the, the form of life that we have, this temporal form of life, this spatial time life, this finite, deeply finite, incredibly limited form of life, um, it, it just doesn't seem to, um, it just doesn't seem to support any kind of certainty as to, um, as to what God is. Now, again, it's like, that doesn't mean you, you can't believe in God. Um I, th I think, but what it's going to take is it's going to take faith to believe in God. I, I really believe that. Um, and and I, I don't think it's irrational to have faith either, because just because of the exceedingly limited perspective we have. I mean, reason has real and deep um, and painful limitations. There's only so much you can do with it. Um, you know? So... Anyway, I hope that's I hope that's useful. Um, so later on in your, in your video, you made a couple of uh, interesting things points, which I also like to uh, <laughs> to address. <laughs> Hence the title of my uh, my video here. Um, so um, you you say there's like two things that uh, somebody would have to convince you of to to um, get you to be a Muslim again. Uh, I'm going to give a shot at him, actually, because <laughs> uh, I, I don't know uh, if you've gotten any satisfactory answers or not from that, and I don't know if um, uh, how well the Muslims have, have been able to do on that, but I, I'm going to give it my best shot here, just because, um, you know, you, you seem to enjoy being a Muslim, and um, um, may, maybe, maybe I can help you out here. Okay, so your first one was... Um, a justice, right? How could it possibly be just for a, you do some finite sin, um, and then you suffer for an infinitely long period of time? Um, you know, honestly, this is a hard sell for me too. I mean, I, I really can't, um, it's really hard for me to stretch my mind that far, okay? But let me give you the best answer to that I've, I've actually heard. Um, so think about if you're if you're designing a system of justice for a minute, right? There's two dimensions, it seems to me, along which if you vary something, you might get a harsher sentence. Okay, what am I talking about here? Okay, so, so for example, um, if you do a, a more violent act towards something, say you you slap something, that might get some, um, you know, that 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 might get get some merit some ju some judgment some some punishment if you kill some something it might merit another punishment okay so that's one that's one dimension right so say say you have somebody's dog it's there right if you slap their dog that may merit one punishment right you may get a fine or something if you kill their dog that may merit a, a harsher punishment right uh so that's one that's one 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 um axis dimension along goods. Another axis that seems to me that this could, could vary along would be the, um, the, the form of being that you've actually offended, right? So for example, if you've offended a, if you um, slap somebody's dog, that might be one punishment. If you slap somebody's child or slap somebody's wife, that might be a, a different punishment, right? Um, so, or if you, 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 um, kill somebody's dog that that may have certain implications you may get some sort of punishment for that but if you kill somebody's child that that might justify a, a more harsh punishment right so you have these two different two different um axes that you're varying along right so and so if you do the same if you do the same act right so for example if you slap a dog or if you slap somebody's child Right, it may justify a harsher punishment if you slap somebody's child than if you slap somebody's dog, just because the child is, is a higher form of life, a higher form of being. Right. 
So as you as you go up the chain of, of being, you know, if you slap somebody's hamster, you slap somebody's dog, you slap somebody's child, um, you get a harsher harsher punishment, even if it's, it might be a, a trivial a trivial offense, right? So if you take this to its logical illogical extreme, right? You know, the the highest form of life, what is the highest form of, of being that you can possibly imagine? That would be God, right? So um, you can't really slap God, right? But you, you can do things like, you know, associate a, a, a companion with them or something like this, right? So it might be that even the tri most trivial um, uh, punishment, right? Or tr most trivially just thing that you do to to against God might justice might require a, an infinitely big sacrifice just because God is this infinitely big, infinitely huge form of being, right? So um, you know God is inf infinite. God is eternal. God is like the, the the most exalted form of being. So any any thing that you do against this God, no matter how trivial it is, um, requires an infinite, infinite uh, um, amount of punishment, just because, just because of this, this, uh, this principle of justice that, you know, if you slap a dog, it's one punishment. If you slap a child, it's another punishment. If you kill a, a dog, it's one punishment. If you kill a child, it's, it's a different punishment. See what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, if, 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 if you insult somebody's dog, if you insult somebody's child, or if you insult God, right, each one of those, as you go up the being, you get higher and higher, um, punishments. So you might actually, you might actually be able to make something like that work. Um, that's the best I can do. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be, uh. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't find that convincing, but it's it's the best I can do. Okay, so the second one is free will. Um, yeah, you mentioned in, in another comment that you actually were uh, you were um, going to watch my series on free will, which is kind of cool, um, kind of flattering to uh, think that people are are, are recommending that uh, series uh, still. Um, and you know, you might be able to do me a favor there actually as you're watching that that video. Um, you know, if something doesn't make sense or if I could do a better job, I've been toying around with the idea of redoing that series um, just because it was kind of like um, you're only seeing one side of the conversation. It was with a, another fellow who was on here a while back called Everett's Vlog, and all of his videos are gone now. So it's it's kind of a one-sided conversation. So so I don't know how, if, if you haven't seen all of the the other videos that were going on in there. I don't know how much sense it makes. So some feedback on that would be cool. But what I'd like to say is, is like, um, you know, it, it, the interesting thing to me is, is, is free will is one of these things where people think that the atheists are the free willians and the theists are the, the, um, excuse me, the, 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 the atheists are the ones who are determinists and don't believe in free will, and the theists are the ones who, who do believe. Nothing could be further from the truth. Um, you know, I, after I did my series on, on, on free will, I happened to run across this book, okay? Uh, freedom of the Will. Notice the freedom is in kind of a weird font there, which I think was kind of funny. But who's it by? It's by Jonathan Edwards. Who's Jonathan Edwards? Jonathan Edwards was a Puritan who lived... Uh, I don't know, maybe 30, 50 years before the American Revolution in Massachusetts. This is basically the first book in philosophy that was written in the United States, um, which anybody in Europe took seriously at all. And basically in that book, uh, we have a Puritan, we have a minister, we have somebody who is deeply convinced in the existence of God. And he goes through and he, in the first chapter of his book, he basically examines every single possibility that I have ever seen on any YouTube video um, or any contemporary philosophical book about free will versus determinism. Any possible mental space that you can imagine in happening. Okay, this guy had already exhaustively enumerated them in the 1700s. Right, and he came down on the side of determinism. He was a Calvinist. Calvinists believe in determinism. 
they just do. It's not a, a atheist position to believe in, in determinism. It's a religious position. Now, he was arguing against people like Bishop Laud back in England, um, who were called Arminians, who believe in free will. Um, and this debate has been going on since the 1700s. But the interesting thing about it is, it's, it's, you know, the religion is kind of has, has receded there. So if you talk about someone like Dennett or something like that, I'm here to tell you, okay, everything Dennett has written about free will is already found in this book. OK, it, it's it's he is in the exactly the same mental space as what the Puritans, as what the Calvinists and, and, and every single atheist that believes in free will. They are in the same mental space as these Calvinist Puritans were in terms of determinism. OK, it's that's just the position. The religion is it's kind of interesting. The whole conversation has become secularized, but it's the same conversation over and over and over again. And in point of fact, uh, believe it or not, okay, this guy wasn't the first one to do it. Um, in point of fact, this whole free will versus determinism debate wasn't invented by uh, Western philosophers at all. This was invented by Muslim philosophers because there are very ambiguous statements in the Quran about this, right? Um, you know, the, the, the first surah there, you look in there, it says, you know, you're not going to understand this book if if Allah doesn't open your eyes. If you know the people who don't believe this, the reason they don't believe it is because Allah has just closed their eyes. He's determined, determined that they aren't going to get it, right? And the ones that Allah determines that they are going to get it, they are going to get it. I mean, it's it's right there. So this was a highly disturbing thing to a lot of philosophers as they're they're sitting trying to puzzle out this. So so these two poles went well. This we have free will and we have determinism. It's the same debate throughout throughout the ages. This will never be resolved. This will this 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 thing. Those positions are known. They're well rehearsed and they have absolutely nothing to do with with religion versus unreligion. Um, maybe somebody who is uh, actually would be kind of interesting to. No, if somebody who is a Muslim and who knows the the history of Islamic philosophy on this and would like to uh, enlighten me on this, um, would be very interested to talk with somebody who is knowledgeable about these things. So, anyway, I certainly hope this this has been a really long video. I certainly hope that it's uh, it's helped you out here. I better wrap it up here before everybody falls asleep.